Hi everyone, Big Mac here. Welcome back to video number two of our discussion of the student's T distribution. So remember in the last video we talked about some basic setup and motivation, uh, basic an idea of where the T distribution was coming from, and we did one example of it. Uh, in this episode we're going to be talking a lot about how it's related to other distributions. We'll talk about more derivations such as how do you find the probability density function for it, as well as give a proof of its variance. So for this part of part two, I'm hoping that you guys are at least somewhat familiar with pr uh, probability density functions and their properties, as well as the notation of expectation, and as well as just some general calculus rules such as substitution and integration by parts, stuff like that. So admittedly, I'm going to be going through this video really quickly. Uh, it is quite a few slides and sometimes it's just pure algebra, and it's like, here, look at this stuff, just do it, believe me, I think it works. All right. So for this uh, second video, I'm going to be talking about a function called the gamma function. I'll then just introduce normal chi-squared, beta, and gamma distributions. I'll do a quick spiel on expectations. We'll then talk about how to derive the uh, PDF, the probability density function for the t-distribution, as well as compute its variance. For now though, one thing that's going to be popping up a lot is this thing called the gamma function. So for a value a, we describe gamma of a, capital gamma, of a as the integral of x to the a minus 1 power times e to the negative x dx integrating from 0 to infinity. So one of the cool things is that if a is an integer then you can actually start doing an integration by parts type thing where you just keep pulling out factors of a or a minus 1, a minus 2, a minus 3 and it turns out that in fact uh, for a being a positive integer gamma of a is the same as a minus 1 factorial so yeah so it's a minus 1 times a minus 2 times a minus 3 etc etc so likewise there is this recursive pattern going on here where gamma of a plus 1 is a times gamma of a this is actually going to be useful for us when we start trying to simplify our expressions in fact um, we can actually evaluate these things at half values as well so we can evaluate gamma of one half three halves five halves so it turns out for gamma of one half being the square root of pi it just you know it just turns out to be like that funny thing is though is that some calculators actually use a, ver a variation of the gamma function to compute the factorial function as we saw that there was this connection so this was on a TA83 calculator that I have you can compute half factorials again partially because of this notion of the gamma distri of, of the gamma function so in fact negative 0 0.5 factorial would be gamma of 0 0.5 which we already said was the square root of pi so about 1.7725 that was just something interesting I thought w was worth pointing out um, let's just talk about some other distributions that pop up in these situations one is the normal distribution also called the Gaussian it's a typical bell shaped curve that you guys have probably seen before so it actually has the following distribution. We have 1 over 2 pi times the variance, sigma squared, uh, t and times, by x I just mean e to the power of everything. So this is e to the power of negative x minus mu quantity squared, where mu is the mean of the distribution, and then divided by 2 sigma squared, where again sigma squared is the variance. Some people use a sigma by itself, and they call that the standard deviation. Another function, another type of gamma of uh, probability distribution that pops up is called the gamma distribution. I don't think I use this in any other part of the video. I'm just mentioning that it's called the gamma distribution because right here, the one of its foremost factors is a gamma function. So, we can, like likewise, we can see that different probability distribution functions uh, will have different parameters. They'll have different shapes and they will also have different domains so for example the gamma is only for positive value or for non-negative values whereas the normal distribution uh, covers all the real numbers um, two more that we'll quickly be talking about is the beta distribution which technically only goes between 0 and 1 and it has this format and note again it has a lot of gamma functions popping up in this thing and then likewise uh, the chi-squared distribution ah sorry yeah, wrong way, wrong way, there we go, okay. The chi-squared distribution uh, following p degrees of freedom. So again, this one has degrees of freedom, like the t distribution has degrees of freedom. Hmm, that might be a hint as to how they're related. So, 
In fact, we have another gamma distribution here, as well as more terms which are non-negative in this situation. The chi squared actually pops up in a couple different places, such as if you took the a normal distribution and then squared it, you would literally get this chi square distribution again. Or if you were adding sums of squares of normal distributions. So the last thing that we can also point out is that the chi square distribution can be used to uh, describe what happens if we have s squared, the sample variance, divided by sigma squared, the true variance. So that actually helps to get an idea of like where, uh, how close your sample variance is actually going to be to the true variance that is going on here. So let's quickly just go into the notation, the idea of expectation. So if we have a function g of x and we want to evaluate its expectation, given some probability distribution, given it either normal or um, gamma, whatever. So if that probability distribution is f of x, and if we want to find the expected value of g of x, we basically just multiply g of x by f of x, and then we integrate that whole thing. So it's kind of like just taking a weighted average where your weight is g of x. So it's not just the uniform weight all the way through. So a couple places where this is important is that the mean of your distribution, mu, can be given by e, by the expectation of x. So like, I mean, like, what do you expect x to be? Well, you would expect it to be the mean. So there you go. Likewise, sigma squared, the variance of a distribution, can be given as the expectation of x minus mu quantity squared. This can also be written as the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x squared. I know they sound the same, but pay attention to the parentheses. So it's actually the uh, expectation of x squared minus mu squared. So that's just another way to think about it. So really quickly, uh, for a beta distribution, suppose we wanted to find the expectation of a beta distribution, uh, we would have our beta function in terms of parameters alpha and beta. So we would have our beta, beta, beta function, and then we multiply everything through by x, and now we wish to integrate this entire thing. Fortunately, this still looks like a beta distribution, but in fact the parameters are now slightly different. If we had a uh, beta distribution with parameters of alpha plus one and beta, and just beta, then our values of x over here would be correct, although the coefficients would still be slightly off. But we know that if we integrate this particular uh, distribution function, that its integral has to be one. So then just the integral of this part here by itself has to be just a reciprocal of what we have over here. So we have gamma of alpha plus one times gamma of beta over gamma of alpha plus beta plus one. So now, looking back over here at this first instance where we're trying to find the expectation of x, uh, we know that these are just constants out here, and now we have the integral of this thing, which as we just saw was that uh, with those other factors. So, now we just have to multiply these all things together, and then recalling our properties of the gamma function, including its uh, recursiveness, so we can cancel out a lot of terms like that, and this thing simplifies to alpha over alpha plus beta. So that's pretty cool. So how do we relate this t distribution back to our other distributions? Well, we know two things. One, we know that eventually, if we haven't, if our sample size n would go to infinity, then we would go back to the standard normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. But we also know that we have to account for the number of degrees of freedom. So the only other distribution that we saw so far that has to deal with that is like a chi-square distribution. So how do these things kind of intermingle? Well. Again, we don't know what the actual standard devi or what the true standard deviation is, but we could reorganize our t statistic, t being this whole thing here. Uh, we could write this in terms of sigmas, just by basic algebra here. So again, we have our t statistic on top, or sorry, our z statistic on top, and then we have the square root of s squared over sigma squared. But didn't we just say that s squared over sigma squared is like also def definitive of the chi square distribution? So yeah, in fact our t distribution can be thought of as a product of a normal distribution and a chi-square distribution. So of course now the problem is we're going to have two different variables going on here. We've got u or you know u representing uh, down here. We've got u representing our original variable in the uh, normal distribution and now we have a v representing our variable in the chi-square distribution. So now this t distribution, now the distribution for our function t, or for our variable t, now depends on two variables, u and v. 
So the question is, how do we combine these two things? And since, we, uh, again, it takes a little bit of back work, but these two distributions are independent of each other, so we can just multiply them together. So what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to get this into something more familiar, where we have u is coming from a normal distribution, and v is coming from a chi-square distribution. So what we actually have to do is combine these two together. Let's do two clever substitutions. We have t being our regular t statistic, where we have u being our standard normal statistic divided by v over p, and then the square root of that thing, which is like we saw already in that other fraction. But right, guys, let's just let w be u, just so that we don't get confused with all of our variables. So now we have a function that is just in terms of t and w. However, we just want the distribution in terms of t. So now what we would have to do is, after we do these substitutions and everything through, we would have to integrate that entire function just with respect to w, that way all the terms that are left are t's. So in fact, when you do that, uh, we come up with this particular function here. We have gamma of p plus 1 over 2 to over gamma of p over 2, gamma of 1 half, square root of p times 1 plus t squared over p to the minus p plus 1 over 2 power. So here's the thing to notice. We have you know, we did all this work, and yet the only place where a t now shows up is just right here, this little t squared term. So in fact, that tells us that this function is an odd, or sorry, is an even function. So in fact, if we wanted to calculate the mean and the variance of these things, well, the mean is easy. I mean, if we're, we want the expectation of t, we just multiply this entire distribution by t. We had an even function before, we just multiply it by t. Now it's an odd function. If we're integrating that odd function from negative infinity to infinity, that's just going to be zero. So then for the variance, all we have to do now is since we know that the mean is zero, or sorry, that since we know that the mean is zero, uh, all we have to do is compute the expectation of t squared. So in order to calculate the integral of, you know, the variance, you know, the thing that would give us the variance, we're going to have to do one last really sneaky substitution. So that 1 plus t squared over p that we had in our integral, uh, let's switch that to, or let's uh, substitute that as 1 over u. Again, why 1 over u? Well, you guys will see in just a little bit. But after doing a lot of algebra and calculus, we can uh, solve for t squared by itself, since that's in the numerator of our integral. We can also just substitute this whole thing in for 1 plus t squared over p. Uh, we can also then solve for dt by itself in terms of du, so that we can make that kind of a substitution. So, you know, organizing all of our variables around dt is negative square root of p over 2u to the 3 halves 1 minus u to the 1 half du. Where else have we seen this thing where it's like itself times 1 minus itself? Think about that for a little bit. But going through the work now, Again, I think this is correct. Uh, if there is not, you know, let me let me know in the comments. Uh, so we have our original integral up here on top. After we substitute everything through, so t squared became p times one minus u over u. One plus t squared over p became one over u, and then dt became this whole product over here. So a lot of things happened here. One, uh, we were normally integrating from negative infinity to infinity, but now since we're integrating an even function because it's like t squared over t squared stuff. Uh, you know, everything is an even function, this is the same as twice the integral from zero to infinity. So that's one thing to point out really quickly. Another thing is, once we start uh, evaluating our bounds after the substitution of 1 plus t squared over p being 1 over u, note that our bounds have now changed from 1 to 0. So then we're going to have to get rid of the negative in order to evaluate from 0 to 1, which would cancel out with this negative term over here. Lastly, this p to the 1 half power, there it is, this p to the 1 half will cancel with this p to the 1 half. So we will have this factor of p pop out over here. And then all we have left is just a bunch of products of u's and 1 minus u's. So fortunately, yeah, we can just evaluate this thing down here. We have u's and 1 minus u's. So now, we just have to evaluate this integral from 0 to 1. But, you know, if, we're in, if we have a function whose domain is 0 to 1 and it's in this format, isn't that a beta function? It is. It's actually related to a beta distribution with, with parameters of p over 2 minus 1 and a beta of 3 halves. So again, if we wanted to calculate the various things associated with this, we can just go ahead and do that now. You know, because we know that the integral of this beta distribution has to be the reciprocal of its regular coefficients. So we have gamma of p over 2 minus 1 times gamma of 3 halves 
over gamma of p plus 1 over 2. So you guys can already see here that a lot of our terms are going to start canceling out. And in fact, you know, after we do a bunch of simplifying out, if we take out our, take out our recursive properties, uh, all we are left with is just p over p minus 2. Just like we had mentioned that the variance of our distribution was to begin with. Our distribution of the t distribution. Our variance of the t distribution. So, there we go. That's some rigorous proof as to how we get down to back to that variance. So again, in conclusion, we use the t distribution when we don't actually know the population variance. However, what these things tell us is that, that it's related to the chi-square distribution and the normal distribution. That's what tells us that we're still going to have roughly that same normalized shape. Of course, the, some of these integrals got a little cra got a little crazy, but what we wound up doing all the time was was looking at these integrals and being like, wait, that's the same kind of integral that pops up in a beta distribution, in a normal distribution. So we can actually go using that matter instead of actually having to compute these things all the way through. Of course, there are plenty of other distributions. There's the Weibull distribution, the F distribution. So that come in comparing these things. So we're, we have still barely touched the surface of where these different kinds of functions can go. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Big Mac saying, later.